Good morning, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee, with your daily devotional, continuing just a few thoughts from Psalm 91 out of John Stott's book, Favorite Psalms. It's a kind of a gift book, uh, as I showed you before when I've read from this. Got some great photos of uh, Israel, Jerusalem, parts uh, of that, that part of the world. And uh, Psalm 91, recommended to me by my good friend Edgar Arnold. Uh, some of you will know Edgar if you live here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. He was teaching on this very same psalm uh, this past Wednesday. So uh, I, as I've done before, I'd like to read the psalm and make a, a few comments from, uh, or read a few comments from uh, John Stott's uh, uh, writing here. Really brilliant uh, way to analyze Psalm 91. It says this, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I love those images right there. Dwelling in the shelter of the Most High, resting in the shadow of the Almighty. It might be for you today, it might be for me. Certainly uh, from time to time, man, it just becomes more and more clear to me how much I need God as my shelter and as a shadow where I can get some rest. Um, I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Again, rich images. Surely he will save you from the fowler snare, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with feathers. Under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by the day. And that, uh, just the idea, when you think about somebody in the ancient world, the terror by night of your, your campfire being, you know, the area where you're trying to sleep and you're concerned about animals, wild animals coming in and, and, and tearing things up, or, and the arrow that flies by day, that kind of constant military threat that, th that they were under back then. Uh, by the, you know, especially in Israel there, which was basically kind of a pass-through nation for all these other empires that would come in and run over top of it. Uh, when it wasn't uh, King David running from, from King Saul who was trying to kill him, it was somebody from the outside trying to get him. So, but the idea here is that the Lord is our refuge and strength. He's our fortress. He's our shield. He's our um, rampart. Uh, and he's the one that gives us reason to have a humble confidence that uh, he's got us, see? Um, so you'll not fear the terror of night or the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. And how, man, how real that word is, the plague that destroys at midday, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. And just so many images there, again, that are foreign to us in the Western world, sophisticated world, modern world that we live in. But during their time, man, daily uh, threats for the psalmist and uh, nightly threats as well. And um, just here to know that we're being encouraged to trust in the Lord and to rest in his love and his protection, uh, his providential care over us. Now, he, uh, the last three verses are what we would call uh, an oracular statement. That means he moves into oracle mode as if God were speaking uh, through the psalmist. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. And I hope you do acknowledge his name as Yahweh, as Jesus, the one who is the Lord, who is your Lord, my Lord, my Redeemer, my Protector, my salvation, yours as well. No matter what happens here. And this is interesting because verse 15 says, 
he, and this is God talking, he, the one that trusts in God, he will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. So it's not a life free of trouble. It's a life of not being alone in trouble. It's a life of knowing that ultimately you belong to God and that ultimately you will know his salvation. Um, he will call upon me and I will answer him. This is God's promise to us. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. So God is watching over you and watching over me. No matter what befalls us, we belong to him eternally, temporally. In every way, we belong to the Lord. With long life will I satisfy him, the Lord speaking of the psalmist here and who has shown confidence in God. And I will show him my salvation. And I want to see the salvation of the Lord as well. I'm sure you do too. I pray that for all of those that are near and dear uh, to me, friends, family members. I pray that for all of those who are struggling and wrestling with, with physical illnesses of all kinds. I pray for all of that, for, for all of those who are struggling with psychological fears, um, wrestling and struggling with the, the, the night terrors or the uh, lack of ability to sleep, the fear that grips their heart and has it in a vice. Well, he breaks, Stott's so brilliant, he breaks the psalm into three parts, verses one and two, he says, really are the believer's faith grounded upon who God is. He is the most high and he is the almighty on the one hand, verse one. He's infinite in transcendence and power. But on the other hand, he's the Lord, verse two. He's Yahweh, that's his personal name that he reveals in the Old Testament. Um, God is a title, Yahweh is his name. And Yahweh, the covenant God of Israel, bound to his people by a solemn undertaking. And he offers this rest in the shadow of God and in his wisdom. He is the believer's refuge and fortress. Verses one and two are so rich that way as a sort of a, a, a proclamation, a declaration, a creed, if you will, of who who is this God you say you believe in and who is he to you and who is he to me? Good questions to ask. The psalmist then, having quoted this confession of faith, moves in verses 3 through 13, Stott says, to uh, endorse it, encouraging believers in it and assuring them of their safety. Bold imagery is used to illustrate the divine defense which is promised. God will defend them as a mother bird hides her chicks under her wings, but also, did you notice, also as a warrior, shield and rampart, you know, so... This, all these images, what, however you're, you're able to understand this, this is who God is, tender but powerful as well. Um, then in verses 14 to 16, uh, the Lord, finally he speaks, neither to the believer nor to the psalmist, but to the reader, approving the believer's faith and the psalmist's theme. Has the psalmist affirmed he will save you? He is quite right. Twice God echoes the same words himself. I will rescue. I will deliver. That's in verses 14 and 15 of Psalm 91. I hope you'll spend time meditating on it. Why? Because he loves you, me. God is the supreme object of the believer's love as well as faith. And it is to those who love God that the assurance is given that in all things God works for their good, Romans 8, 28. I encourage you to read that. Uh, uh, go back and look at the, those last verses in Romans chapter 8. They're so rich. Not that believers can afford to be idle and do nothing. They must trust God and express their faith in prayer, Stott says. But God will answer them and they can count on him and trust on him. Trust in him, right? That's right. The divine deliverance does not, however, always mean an escape from trouble in this life. It sometimes means finding God with them in trouble. Verse 15, the final promise which God makes to his trusting servants is of long life and salvation. Verse 16, it is not impossible that like the prophets, the psalmist wrote more than he knew. That's awesome. For the ultimate meaning of security is that eternal life and salvation which are found in Christ alone. Lord, thank you for this. Be our God today as we walk with you. Be God in our lives, we pray. Amen and amen.